What up, what up, Winbush here. And today I wanna to show you how I did this wall break inside of UEFN, that's Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Now, when I worked on this game a couple of months ago, funny enough, UEFN didn't accept the Olympic files, but as I was putting together this tutorial this morning, I actually saw with the recent update to UEFN, we can now bring in Olympic files, which makes the process a lot simpler. But I also wanna show you the way I originally did it, just in case anybody's interested on how I did it manually. Now for the wall break simulation, I did it inside of Cinema 4D. I know a lot of people asked me before, why didn't I do it in Unreal Engine? I did initially try it with Unreal, but the tools are different between Unreal Engine 5 and UEFN. UEFN doesn't have the fractures and all that different stuff in it, as of yet at least. So I had to use Cinema 4D to be able to get this desired result. So if I look right here and hit play, you can see that I have this wall break and it's breaking with this capsule that's going through. And this is a more complex simulation that I did at the end of the day. It came out to about 512 little pieces in here that I brought in manually inside of UEFN. But let's start a project from scratch so we can see exactly how to build it out. So with the blank scene inside of Cinema 4D, I'm just gonna make a cube real quick, bring this down here, maybe make this about two, then make it a thousand by a thousand. And then I'm just going to add another cube in here and I'm just going to drag this up a little bit like so. Now I do have a tutorial that goes fully into Veroni Fracture inside of Cinema 40 if you want to make something more complex, but I'm going to keep this one simple so that I can show you the process to bring it into UEFN. So moving on, I'm going to come back over here to where we have the cloner. I'm going to left click on this and then I'm going to come down here to Veroni Fracture. Now with this inside the scene, I'm going to take my cube that's up top here and I'm going to drag it underneath the Veroni Fracture and you can see right off the bat, we already have some fracturing going on. Now I'm just gonna leave it at default. Like I said, I have a tutorial that gets more in depth on it if you wanna make something more complex, but I'm just gonna leave this one as is, and I'm just gonna add some simulation colliders to it. So with my bottom one selected right here, I'm gonna come over here to tags, and I'm gonna come down here to simulation, and I'm gonna make it a collider. And now with the variety fracture selected, I'm gonna come back over to tags, come down here to simulations, but this time I wanna do rigid body. Now with my rigid body selected, what I wanna do is come down here inside my attributes panel, come over here to collision, and for friction, I'm just gonna bring this up to one. And that's so my pieces don't slide all over the place or bounce around, they're just gonna stick to the surface here. Now if I come over here to cache, come down here to cache scene, I'm gonna cache out the simulation so it bakes all the frames. Now with the simulation finished, I'm gonna click on play. You can see we have a simple collision going on. So let's say that you're happy with how your simulation is looking. The next thing I wanna do from here is come down here in the lower right hand corner and you'll see that we have two options. We have convert object cache to Alembic and then we have convert scene cache to Alembic. So I'm just gonna make sure my Veroni fracture is selected here with my tag and I'm just gonna convert the object to Alembic because I don't really care about the floor. So I'm gonna select this and then on my desktop, I have a folder called tutorial. So I'm just gonna name this file crash. So it'll be crash.abc and I'm just gonna click on save. And now we have an Olympic file that is saved out. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, I said before it was a little bit more complicated because UEFN didn't accept the Olympic files, but as of today, we can. So I'm gonna show you this process right now, how we can make it simplified with the Olympic file. So with UEFN open right now, I'm just gonna make a new folder. So I'm gonna right click down here and I'm just gonna name it ABC for Olympic file, double click on it. And then with my Windows Explorer opened up, I'm just gonna select that Olympic file left click and drag it right here into my scene. I'm gonna select the top track right up here and down here where it says import type, instead of static mesh, I'm just gonna click on skeletal. Now, if you're used to working inside of Unreal Engine 5, you notice that there is a geometry cache in there, but we don't have that inside of UEFN, but trust me, the skeletal mesh works. I tried it this morning. So make sure you have that selected. I'm not gonna do merge meshes or anything. I'm just gonna leave everything at default. The only other thing that you wanna make sure that you have correct is your frames down here. I know my timeline was 90 frames, so I'm gonna keep that down there. And then I'm just gonna click import. And after a few moments, now it's fully imported. So now we have three different objects here with skeletal mesh, animation sequence, and the skeleton. So we wanna click this pink one here. This is skeletal mesh. I'm just gonna click and drag it into my scene. And even down here inside of my details panel, I can zero it out because it's gonna be at zero, zero, zero. That's how we built it out inside of Cinema 4D. But you'll notice that everything is all broken apart here. So what we wanna do now is I'm gonna come back up here to my top layer. I'm gonna right click down here inside of my browser. And then I'm just gonna make a sequence. So right here under cinematics, I'm gonna make a level sequence. And I'm just gonna name this one ABC as well. And I'm gonna double click on it. 
and now we have our sequencer so with this selected inside my viewport you'll notice inside of my outliner it's selected here as well i'm going to lift click drag that down here into my sequencer and now we have it down here inside of our timeline and where it says animation i'm just going to click the plus symbol and you should see animation sequence right here so if i left click on this now if i click on play now we have our sequence inside of uefn but you'll notice when it's done playing it's going to convert back to this scene right here what you want to do to fix that is you'll want to come right here to where it says animation inside your timeline you want to right click on it come up here to properties and where it says when finished instead of project default you want to click on keep state so i'm going to select this then i'm going to come through and play it again so now you can see that it kept it at the end of the animation so if that's all you wanted to know how to do, that's the end of that part of the tutorial. But if you want to see the manual way that I had to do it whenever I was working on the game with Method Man there, I'm happy to show you that just in case you want to try it out for yourself. But it is extremely manual. And so let me get right into it. So I'm going to open up a new scene inside of Cinema 4D. And then I'm going to take that Olympic file that I saved out initially. I'm going to left click and drag that here into Cinema 4D. Now down here, my frame rate is 30, so you just want to make sure that you have everything selected as you need it. I just leave mine at default, and I'm going to click OK. Now you might be asking, why am I bringing the Olympic file back into Cinema 4D? Well, before UEFN didn't allow for Olympic files, and so the workaround that I found was, instead of bringing in an Olympic file, I would convert that over to an FBX, but in order to do that, I had to bring it first back into Cinema 4D, and then convert it to an FBX from there. Like I said, it's a manual process. So over here inside of my objects panel, I'm just going to select everything in here and then coming down here inside of attributes, I'm going to click on basic and where it says name, I'm just going to name this one break. Now, when I did that, you'll notice that all my layers up here are now also called break. But if we want to bring this into UEFN, they can't be named the same exact thing. So we have to rename these sequentially. So in order to do that, I'm going to come over here to tools. I'm going to come down here to naming tool, which is right here under extra left click on this. Then I'm going to right click on their attributes to undock it so we can see better what's happening. And once you have the naming tool open, you want to come down here to replace and you want to look for a suffix. So I'm going to left click in here and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to do underscore. And then while holding the shift key still, I'm going to hit four and that's going to bring up the dollar sign. And then I want to do capital N. Now, whenever I hit replace name, make sure you check to see what happens over here in the object panel as well. So I'm going to click this now. And you can see right off the bat, it's going to add it in sequential order. So we have break underscore zero, underscore one, two, three, four, etc. So now we can bring this as an FBX into UEFN. So with everything selected here still, make sure I select everything here. I'm going to come over here to file. I'm going to come down here to export and I'm going to save it as an FBX. But I want to click on the gear because I just want to make sure I have some attributes selected. So I'm going to select this gear and this side of here. I want to do selection only because I like only bringing over stuff I have selected. And then also under animation, you want to make sure you have track selected. And that's all you need to do there. So I'm going to click on OK. And I'm just going to save the FBX inside of my folder here. So I'm going to click on save. And now we can bring that FBX into UEFN. So now we're back inside of UEFN. I'm going to make a new folder. So down here in the content browser, I'm going to right click, come right here, the new folder. And I'm going to make an FBX folder. Double click on this. Then I'm just going to drag over my Windows Explorer here and I'm going to take this FBX file. I'm going to click and drag it into my content browser here. Now we have the FBX import options here. And the only thing I want to do is make sure I come down here to where it says animations and I want to select the import animation. So make sure you have this selected on exported time and I'm just going to click import all. And then you'll see this message log pop up here, but you can just ignore everything in there. But you'll notice now inside the content browser, we have a piece of geometry for every single Veroni fracture that we have from Cinema 4D. So that's the big difference between doing it as an Olympic and as an FBX. But if I come over here and I left click on this and I come up here to where it says skeletal mesh, I can filter it out to where we only have the mesh now that we could drag inside of our viewport. So I'm going to left click here, hold down the shift key, drag all the way down, select the last one here, and then I'm just going to left click and drag it into my viewport. Now I can come back here again and I can reset the filters so we can see everything again. Now let's see how we can build out this animation inside a sequencer, but I'm going to create a new sequencer for that. So I'm going to come back in here, right click, come over here to where it says cinematics. I'm going to add a level sequence. 
So now I'm just going to name this one FBX and then I'm just going to click on save because it's a good idea to always save out your scene. And then I'm going to double click on this to open up the new sequencer. So I have everything selected still here inside of my outliner and I'm just going to left click and drag it over here into my sequencer. Now you'll notice I brought a layer in for each individual piece of geometry. So that means manually we have to add the animation to each piece of geometry. So right here where it says animation, I'm going to left click on this, add that there. I'm going to do this one as well. Same thing here. And now if I click on play, you can see that it brought the animation in for each one of those pieces, but only the ones that I added the animations for. So remember with the limbic file, I was able to do everything in one full sweep. With the FBX file, you have to do it all individually. If I left click, and I can hold down the control key just to select these three here. Then if I right click, come up here to properties and go down here to where it says when finished, project default, I'm going to do keep state. So now whenever I play through the animation, it should keep that state at the end of the animation. So you can see where this is going to get kind of redundant. Like in my project file, I did this for over 500 pieces, but I really wanted this effect in my game. So I did what I had to do, but now it's easier that we can bring in the limbic files. And for anybody curious on how it actually looked inside of my game level, I opened it up here. And if I come down here and click on play, it goes to this scene right here. And you can see that original wall break breaking inside the scene there. Then if I scroll down here inside of my sequencer, you can see if I scroll all the way to the bottom, it was about 512. So yeah, all together, the pieces of geometry was 524. And you can see that we have animation layers for each one of these pieces. Lord knows I would have loved for the limbic file to be implemented whenever I made this game, but I made it work. So hopefully this helps answer the question for anybody out there that was asking how I was able to bring this simulation into EFN. Like I said at the top of the video, I tried to do it inside of Unreal Engine 5, but when I tried to merge that into UEFN, it just completely freaked out and it didn't work at all. But luckily, if you have a 3D program like Cinema 4D or Blender or Maya, you could do your simulations in there and then just bring it in as an Olympic file. So once again, my name is Jonathan Wimbush. If you're new, subscribe to the channel if this is your first time seeing it. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.